video we're going to go over how to make your SketchUp picture frame model. This is going to be the summative model for the SketchUp unit and you need this picture frame uh, file set up so that you can get your lumber and actually start building. First thing we're going to do is in our new blank space here, we've got a new build space, it's still entitled, we're going to click on the guy and get rid of him. And then we're going to set up our save file right away. So if you click on the untitled, click on our SketchUp folder, you're going to call this picture frame and save it. Now, first thing we're going to be making is a rectangle that at first is going to look really tiny or it's not there because we were zoomed out quite a bit, but that is okay. So we're going to use the rectangle tool with the R key starting at our origin. Remember, we're going to click once and release. So we click once and let go, drag our rectangle out this way. The dimensions are going to be 17 inches by 1 and 5 8, so it's a little different how we type that. We start with the 17, it's just 17, no apostrophe like that. So just 17 comma, to do the one and five eighths, it is one space five slash, the slash is down by the question mark there, eight. So if you look in the dimensions box, it's 17 comma one space five slash eight for 17 by one and five eighths inches. And you hit enter and you can see it's really tiny. That is when we use our zoom extents tool on your tool sheet that is number 20. That is control shift E. And we're going to zoom right in on that piece. So it's 17 long, 1 and 5 eighths wide. Make sure you get that in there. Next we're going to push pull this up to make the thickness of the wood. So push pull is the P key. Do the cursor change, it highlights, you click and release and push up. So what we're going to type in is for 3 quarters of an inch, which is 0.75. So 0.75 for 3 quarters of an inch and hit enter. And now we have our piece that is 17 long, 1 and 5 eighths wide, and 3 quarters of an inch thick. That is what we want. Make sure you save. And if it asks you to purge, yes, always purge all. The next thing we're going to do is put the groove on here called the rabbit groove. Uh, you won't get this on your wood right away. It is something we're going to do on the first step in the shop called routing. But I want you to have the groove on here so that it helps you visually see that your markings of the angles are going the correct way on your wood. So we're going to be utilizing the tape measure tool. So the T key for tape measure. What we're going to do is take this top edge here. We are going to go click once and release and move it back along the green. And we are going to go, we are going to go back 3 16 of an inch. So with our tool loose and active here, we're going to type in 3 slash 16, 3 slash 1 6 and hit enter. And then now we have a tape measured line back 3 16 of an inch. The next thing you have to do is draw a line. So we're going to start here. This is really important if you zoom in with our line tool, which is the L key. Make sure it says on the intersection. If it doesn't, that means you probably made your tape measure tool not go directly across the surface there. So we want to make sure it says intersection. You're going to click once and let go. And this is where I use the zoom away from and the zoom to. And I click down on this intersection and draw the line. So now you can see there is a line drawn across here. Once you've done that, you can use the erase tool, the E key, and erase the tape measure line. Again, do that off to the end, past the wood piece. Otherwise, you're going to erase your line. The next thing we need to do is this, bring this down. So this is the width of it. Now we're going to bring it down. So push-pull again, P key. Again, make sure you're on this skinny section right here. You're going to click and release once. Bring it back toward yourself so we can pull it down. We're going to go a quarter of an inch or 0.25. So with this active, coming down, type in 0.25. You can see in my dimensions box, 0.25 and hit enter. And that's going to bring it down a quarter of an inch. And again, once you have that, save regularly. 
Now that it's saved, we are going to start with the layout markings on top. So we're going to be using our tape measure tool quite a bit here. So we'll start with the tape measure tool T. From the left side down here, the left end, we're going to click once and release. Bring it down this way, seven inches. So you're going to type in seven and enter for seven inches. And then we're going to go to the other end down here on the right end. Click on that edge. Click once and release. Bring it over nine inches. So nine, enter. So now we have a seven inch side and a nine inch side. Next, what we're going to do is use our line tool. So the L key. We're going to draw these lines across here. So we're going to go from this intersection of the dotted line and the edge, click once and release, bring it to this intersection on top. You're stopping at this edge here, so you have a solid line across. You will be drawing that line with a pencil on your actual wood. Same thing here, click on the intersection, bring it over to intersection, and now you have this center part here. So like before, we are going to erase with the E key those two uh, guidelines there from the tape measure to get rid of them and save it again. You're going to save a lot. Next we're going to do is make our angled lines that come in here. To do that we need the protractor. So you're going to click on the expand menu buttons down here, the three dots at the bottom of the toolbar, and go to the protractor tool right here. With this we want to make sure that we are seeing blue. We want on blue. If it's on green or red, that's a bad problem. So we want it on blue. So what we're gonna do is go to this end here. And for the protracted work, it's three clicks. So you click first where you wanna start the angle, which is this top corner. So you click once and let go. You bring it to this other corner on that same edge, click once and let go. Then we're gonna pull that toward the middle. And you can see it's changing the angle. And if you read the angle in the measurement box it tells you what angle. We want it to be 45 degrees. So you could try to fight it and find 45 degrees. The easiest way is just to type it. So we're just going to type in 4, 5 and enter. And now it's automatically at a 45 degree angle. So that's what direction we want this one to go. For this side of it we want it to go back the other way. So same kind of thing. We're going to use this line as our edge. So click that corner once. Bring it down to the bottom corner here, click another time, bring it toward the middle, and the same thing, type in four, five, and enter. And now we have another 45 degree line there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the nine inch part down here. So we're gonna click once here, click twice, bring it in, type 45, and enter. And once we have that clicked on enter, we're gonna move to the end and click top corner, click this corner here, bring it toward the middle, type 45 and enter. And now we have our 45 degree angles marked with guidelines. Next we have to draw over those with the line tool. So before we do that, save again. Now we have our line tool active. So again, very important, make sure you're zoomed in enough to see where you're at. So you're gonna go on the end point of that corner to this intersection on that edge and click. So we have that line across the top now. This is gonna be the same on everything. Make sure you're on that intersection on the edge with the rabbit groove. So end point to intersection. And the reason the top corner says end point instead of intersection is because it's the end point of those lines that you're drawing it at. And there's intersection there. So you should have all four angles drawn. So again, we're going to erase our guidelines with the E key. And now we have one piece done, so we're going to save this. And what's really important now is we're going to turn this into a group because we need to make another one of these and it's easier to just copy and paste than it is to try to remake everything. We're going to save some time. So if you remember, we did our triple click so we're gonna, so if we click once, it just does that. Double click does the outline. What we wanna do is triple click. So we're gonna click three times really quickly. So go click, 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 just like this. Click, click, click. 
Now you can see the whole thing is selected. Once that's selected, you're gonna do the right mouse button, so right click on the mouse, and we're gonna select make a group. Once you do that, now this piece is all one piece. <coughs> now it's all one piece, we're going to copy it and paste it to make another one. So the copy is just the same as a regular program. On your cheat sheet, so you see it's control C, so we control C and copy. Then we need to click off of it in the background with the select tool. And then we control V and paste. And it will bring in another piece here. So now we have two of the exact same pieces. Hey, okay, nice and easy. Save it once again. Once that's done, now what we have to do is start putting our dimensions on. So there's a few dimensions and labels that we need to put on here so that we know you made it the right size on SketchUp, but also so that when we print this out, you have the correct dimensions on your paper so you know where to put your marks when you're working with your actual lumber. So to do that, we're gonna need our dimensions tool. So if you go to the expand tool menu again, the dimensions tool is right here, except the three with lines and dots. Activate that. We're gonna put all of our dimensions on this top piece right here. So in the midst of this, we're gonna be taking screenshots. So we'll show you how to do that. You did that on your uh, house model, but we'll have a review of how to do that here. So we're gonna start on this end. So you're gonna zoom in on this end here. So we're gonna have the measurements both up and down here, side to side, and then we're gonna take the angled measurements uh, for the thickness here. So we're gonna start here. So with this dimensions tool, you have to click both corners and then pull it out. So we're gonna start on this end point of the group and click once, bring it down to the channel here, click twice, and we're gonna pull it out on the red axis you see the red dotted line there or the green dotted line here we want it on red and we're only going to go out just a little bit then we're going to start on this corner make sure it says end point and it's not the blue move okay so end point click once come to this corner end point click twice then you're going to move it out on red and match up to the quarter inch so we got our quarter inch and three sixteenths Next, we're gonna orbit around here. So you can see this side just a little bit. We want the thickness. So we could get back there, but we want it right next to these so it's in one shot. So it's a little different. So what we're gonna do is click this top corner again, the purple endpoint, click once and let go. Move your mouse down. You can see how it shows three quarters of an inch when it's at the bottom, but there's nothing to click on. So I'm gonna put my mouse then on the corner to this end point and click. And then you'll see it brings that line out at an angle, but it's still the correct three quarters of an inch. I bring it out just past these and I click. And then I'm gonna orbit back this way. And this is where I'm going to take a screenshot. So here's a quick reminder how to take a screenshot. When you do your screenshot, you're gonna use these key controls. You're gonna hold control and shift at the same time, and then press the show windows button, which you see there is a square with the two lines. The show windows button is just above the number six on your keyboard. So hold control and shift and then tap show windows. Okay, so you're gonna do that. So it's gonna look a little different because I'm on a Mac, you have your Chromebooks with the same process, control shift, show windows you're going to draw the select window. Now for this one, it does not need to be huge. I just want to see the top edge. I wanna see your groove here, your uh, measurements and the bottom corner. So I'm just gonna make a small box just like that. That is all I need for this screenshot. It's just that big. And you're going to click capture. For you, that will go straight into your downloads, okay? Now we have other measurements to do on this. So we are going to come up and orbit to the top and take some measurements along the sides, the back edge here and this end over here. So dimensions again, we're gonna take the dimensions of each section. So we'll go to this top corner, click once, bring it to this line here 
Click twice, and we're going to bring it up on the green just a little bit. You don't want to go out too far, because the more spread out it is on your screen, the smaller it's going to be on your paper. So we should have seven inches from the left edge to this left line we drew. Scooching over to this end, do the same thing. Go from this line to the right edge. Bring it out on green so it matches the seven. Should have seven inches, nine inches. And we're gonna do one more along that same edge to show the total length. So this end point down to this end point. Bring it out slightly above those so we have just that gap of the one foot, five inches, which is the same as 17 inches. Okay, the other last measurement for measurements we're gonna put on is down on this end. So come over to this end here. You're gonna do the bottom edge to show the one and five eighths inches. So you're gonna click once on this bottom corner, twice on that bottom corner, pull it out a little ways so you can see it when we come back up on top. Okay, so you need to be able to see that. When we get zoomed in like this, you need to be able to see it. So if it's really tight, like you can see my one is barely visible, I'm gonna just bump that out just a little bit farther so I can see it. Now, what I'm gonna do is add a text label here that tells me about all of the angles. So back into our expanded toolbar by clicking the three dots, we're gonna go to the text angle here, text tool. And then we're gonna click right in here, like right on this line and bring it over. And what we're gonna do is delete out the measurement and we are gonna type in all angles 45 degrees. Just like that, all angles 45 degrees. That way we know that all those angles should be 45 degrees. When you're making it, you'll type that and then you'll just click off in the background. So we have our all angles, seven inches, nine inches, one foot five, and one foot five eighths from this side. Before we take our screenshot, we need to close this gap, make them tighter together. So again, they can be bigger on the paper. So we're just going to click on that to select that whole group. And this is where we pay attention. Zoom in a little bit, the move tool, so M key. We're gonna grab this bottom corner that's on the axis. What we're gonna do is match it up to this corner. We're not clicking anything yet, so we match it up and back it off just a little bit. So there's just a little gap there. But they're both lined up. And then you're going to you can use the pan tool. We are going to zoom in here and get this as big as we can without going past the edge of the work area. Make sure we're on top, just like that. Nice and straight with the screen. And then we're gonna take our second screenshot. So again, the control shift show windows. And you're going to drag this nice and tight around this whole piece here. So you get both pieces of wood and all of the measurements and notations. Once you have that selected like that, click capture. Now that we have our model done, again, we're gonna save. So this is all the model we're gonna make for right now. Now we're going to make our document. So just like before on the house model, you can go back to the Google Classroom tab, click your waffle, we're gonna start a new doc. Make a new blank doc. We are gonna call it Picture Frame Print. So you see that up here in the title, Picture Frame Print. And then we are going to go to the File menu and Page Setup. You may have to scroll down, but File, Page Setup. And just like before, Landscape Orientation, we're changing all these to half inch margins. So if you double click in the top box, type in 0.5 and hit that tab key in the upper left corner, just tab 0.5, tab 0.5, tab 0.5 and enter. Now we have our landscape piece. You can tell because it's 10 inches wide here for our workspace instead of seven or eight. First thing again is your first and last name and your period number. 
So you type your first and last name and period number so that we know what that is and then hit return. Now for you guys, uh, when you do this next step for the pictures, it's gonna be in your downloads folder. Mine, because I'm on the Mac or on my desktop. So once you have that, our first picture is going to be the last one we just took. So you're gonna go insert image, upload from computer. Again, yours would be in the downloads. Mine are uh, on my desktop. So we're going to take our last picture, which is this one of both pieces of wood and all the measurements. We are going to upload that in. Again, be careful, make sure it doesn't go past the margin, but this just fills it. And you're gonna hit return once. And we're gonna put the other picture, the close-up of that end with the three-quarter, or three-sixteenths quarter and the uh, three-quarter measurement. So again, insert image from computer, yours would be in your downloads. Mine is this one here. Now it looks huge, we don't want that. We want to shrink it down considerably because this all needs to fit on one page. Okay, so now I made it really small. I can look at my margins. I can bring it down to about here. So I'm gonna bring it down to that margin space. It all has to be one page. So double check that it's all one page. Once you get it to here, it is done and ready for printing. It should look just like mine with your first and last name and period number. The top picture is the layout of the two pieces showing all the markings, seven inch, nine inch, the one foot five, the one and five eighths, and the all angles 45 degrees. The second picture is the close up of the end, so the quarter inch deep by a 3 16 wide uh, router groove, and then it's three quarters of an inch thick. Once it's like this, you're gonna follow the same directions as you did for the house on printing from your Chromebook. So there'll be a separate tab in Google Classroom on the printing from Chromebooks. Follow those directions from this point on. Remember, this has to be turned in in order to get your lumber to actually start your project. Be sure to follow directions. Ask your teacher if you're lost. Good luck.